Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with... Devin. Devin. Link to his Twitch channel in the description. He streams Hearthstone. And Counter-Strike and whatever else he feels like. Alright, so... We just decided to do something completely random for you. Not another Magic match, or what, what other... So we do Yu-Gi-Oh, we do Pokemon. We have the one Cards Against Humanity. We ought to do that for an episode. We really ought to. Just get some friends over and... Yeah. Jam some games of that. Uh, but for right now, I actually have a bit of a quiz show for him. I have made some, uh, some questions, and he hasn't seen them yet. Um, the game is this. Is X more expensive than a Black Lotus? And I want to see, his, I want to test his collectible knowledge, and yours as well. Play along with us. Uh, so, just to give you, just to throw this out, for, for all items in this list, for all items in this game, um, we're going to use the highest price that they were ever sold at. Um, so, in the case of a Black Lotus, an Alpha Near Mint has sold for $27,302. That's the number to beat. That's the number to beat. So, to play a, a sample game for you, uh, how much is a Glycerin Elf? What's the most that a Glycerin Elf has ever sold for? Any Glycerin Elf? Any Glycerin Elf. Best Glycerin Elf. A foil? Like... Of, of an, an Epidim promo or a foil or a misprint. The, the, the most... I'll say seven dollars. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Alright, so there's that. Alright, so the first one, the first actual one. Uh, do you know what Action Comics 1 is? I've heard of it. Yeah, that's the one that has Superman. It's the one that introduced Superman. Uh, the comic where he has the car over his head and he's chunking it at something. I don't know. I, I don't even remember. It's on the screen. Whatever. So, that's Action Comics number one. How much do you think the most that an Action Comics one has ever uh, been sold for? Is it more or less than a Black Lotus? I'm going to say more than a Black Lotus. How much would you guess? I would guess... $75,000. Go up. $500,000. Let's, uh... Let's say $3,207,852. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean... It is Superman, but still, that's, that is a lot. Um, near Mint and all that jazz. Now, here's something completely random. I don't know, I hope you have no point of reference for this one. Uh, it is a Darth Vader toy. Uh, specifically, so, like, th this is a, something made by Kenner. Kenner is not a company that exists anymore. I think it was bought out by Hasbro or something. Um, originally, they had uh, Star Wars toys with something called a double telescoping lightsaber. That means that, like, w instead of, like, when you try to push it out, there were... How do I do this and make it look right? There were two that came out at the same time, so that it sort of... It looked a little bit more like what an actual lightsaber you'd think would look like, I imagine. Anyway, um, but it's kind of fragile. It doesn't really work as a toy. Um, so instead they switched over to a single telescoping one, which is just, you push it out and it just comes right out with just one single solid unit, much harder to break. Um, but be but Kenner already released some of the double telescoping ones on the market, and the rarer ones to find uh, before they were pulled, they got in circulation, are the Darth Vader ones. Um, uh, only about, we don't know exactly, at least as far as I'm aware, but about 15 are ever thought to have made it to the market. Is it worth more or less than a Black Lotus? Black Lotus, yeah. I'll say less, since exactly. there are a ton of lightsabers out there. Fair enough. And they're not as collectible as comic books. No, they're not. It is Star Wars, though. Superman or Star Wars, it's actually worth a little bit more. $30,000. Now, this is for the highest one that's ever been bought. A lot of them uh, were already open, meaning they don't have the card on the back. So, like, there's the card, the cardboard plate, whatever. And then there's the toy, and then there's the plastic that holds the toy in. And if that whole thing is together, it's actually worth a good bit more. Um, this is, so the highest that it's ever been sold for is a carded one that's actually worth more than Black Lotus, believe it or not. And granted, I mean, if there's only about 15 that made it out at all, there's maybe a few more than 15 Black Lotuses, but... <laughs> yeah. Maybe. And maybe not 15... 
uh, Mayor Met Black Lotuses that have never been played, but yeah. Alright, so now this one, again, one I hope you have no point of reference for whatsoever. Uh, so, some of the Harry Potter books that were released um, in the United Kingdom, in the UK, uh, were released so quickly that they had lots of misprints in them. Lots of misprints. Sometimes the page was upside down. Um, sometimes there were transposed signatures in the binding. Uh, the Prisoner of Azkaban. I even have my notes. I have notes. <laughs> Behind the scenes here at T-Wing Listener Elf. Um, printed in Britain. I was actually credited to, instead of J.K. Rowling, the actual, it was her actual name, Joanne Rowling. Which, of course, if it's on the front cover, she probably wants it in the book as well. Uh, so, but if you get one of these, um, how much do you think it's worth? Like, the highest price one that was in the Azkaban first edition misprint? Sure, let's go with that. Um, without knowing how many were released? I don't know how many were released. <laughs> I'll say less than, just because I feel like they're probably a lot. You are right. Um, the Sydney Charles or Sydney Charles Books in England uh, has offered ten thousand dollars for any of these copies that have those misprints um, in new condition and with the dust cover still intact. So, yeah, ten thousand dollars. That, that's quite a find, quite a pickup, but not not black lotus worthy. We're not quite there. What do I win? Well, you're uh, one win for three right now. Black lotus. Oh my. Oh, oh, shit. That, sure I, it's a game lotus. show. I need a prize. I need a prize for him, right? Well, let's see. Um, hang on. What do I? What do I do? What do I do? I'll think. I'll get back to you on that. Okay. I, I'm going to be spending the rest of this time trying to think of what that prize is going to be. Um, now here's here's another book one. Uh, the Wicked Bible. Uh, it's not actually what it's called. Uh, that's just what people have decided to call it. <clears throat> In 1631, over 1,000 copies of the King James Bible were produced with a very important word missing. In Exodus 20:14, the seventh commandment read, Thou shalt commit adultery. I can't not laugh and read that. Uh, the seventh commandment read, Thou shalt commit adultery. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that anyone would actually be dominant. Don't have to actually think, oh, yeah, let's go and do that now. <laughs> but, okay, actually, someone would. We live in the day and age of YouTube. There's plenty of evidence. They're at least using it as an excuse. It's, there you go, there you go. Uh, the misprint promoting promiscuity, that alliteration there, uh, became known as the Wicked Bible. King Charles ordered the Bible to be destroyed in a bonfire, and only 11 copies of the Wicked Bible survived. So given that... <laughs> A lot more than a black lotus. Now, I'll actually say, I, uh, I know when I, uh, the church I used to go to back in uh, Mount Terry, we were just doing a Sunday school lesson. This was you know, like a decade ago, something like that. And we had a, we opened a Bible, just everyone read this passage. And I noticed that mine also had a misprint in it. It was another one of those, uh, I think mine had the word, maybe it did not have the word not. It was one of those, like, it either had not in there, or it didn't have not when it should have. Anyway, so this, it happens, it does happen, but um, <laughs> when there are far fewer Bibles, and it's literally a state religion, it means a little bit more. A uh, little bit more. By the way, $100,000. Interestingly, Action Comics is worth 30 <laughs> times as much. <laughs> The Superman versus Thou Shalt Commit Adultery. You're, so you're three for four now. I'm gonna make things really awkward right now. The Pasta Bible. The, the recipe for spelled tagliatelle. I'm terrible with Italian. Is on the screen. The the recipe is on the screen. Uh, called for and I quote: salt and freshly ground black people. Not black. End quote. Not black pepper. 
Needless to say, about 7,000, I'm making this really awkward, no, I'm just kidding. About 7,000 of those that had yet to be shipped were destroyed, but a bunch of these got out in circulation. Um, that's it. How much do you think that was? That misprint? How much is that misprint? Say less than a black lotus. I actually don't remember this one. I want to see. Yes, it's worth less than a black lotus. We're talking twenty thousand dollars. While the recall and all the copies already sold would have been next to impossible, enough were still released that you know there's enough of a supply. They're less than a black lotus. And what demand, right? What what demand? No, seriously, Teddy and Teddy sounds really good. You and I did pasta like all the freaking time. Super cheese. It is super cheap. And you're an athlete, and I still sometimes pretend that I'm an athlete. So, lots of carbs, lots of carbs. Uh, Princess Diana Beanie Baby. While we're talking about killing people, let's talk about a dead person, right? Also, the comment section is now full of conspiracy theorists. It's, it's just you two, that's how it works. Um, after, Princess, after Diana, Princess of Wales died, um, this bear was made to raise money for her eponymous uh, memorial fund. Uh, while the exact numbers aren't known, many people believe that only about a hundred first edition ones were made. Um, and the most valuable ones are some like from Indo made in Indonesia with a certain tag on them. How much do you think a Princess Diana Beanie Baby is worth? Hmm. Well, Beanie Baby's crashed. Yes. But my parents certainly know that too. Sounds like they sold for a lot of money back in the day. For a brief moment. They did. And if there weren't very many first edition ones, I'm gonna say more than a black lotus. So this is this is a very important distinction between how much something is being is a, is listed for and how much it's actually worth, how much it's actually been bought for. You can go on eBay right now and see Princess Diana Beanie Babies worth six digits. But, but... How much was it actually sold for? Uh, according to TYCollector.com, even a near mint first edition one is not worth anywhere near the asking price that you can find on auction sites like eBay. Uh, they recommend no higher than $235. So how much was one ever sold for, though? Uh, about $235. It, it's the, the trick is that there's actually more than one like type of first edition, and there are just so many of them that it dilutes the value of the first edition ones, and like you said, Beanie Babies crash, and it's just overall not worth as much. And also just lots of... It's a fad that was yesteryear, lots of replica, I don't know. It's just, and there's a lot of outlets for that demand, and so on and so forth. That's, I don't know. They made a ton of Beanie Babies. They made a ton of Beanie Babies. Now, uh, if you happen to know anything at all about stamp collecting, you probably know about the Inverted Jenny. It's the most famous stamp in the world. Um, there was a block of a hundred of these stamps that were printed and sold in 1918. Now the way that an inverted, the way that they printed stamps back then is you took the stamp sheet and the stamp itself is two separate colors and you can't print both colors on at the same time. You print one with a, the plate or whatever is doing the printing and then you go over it and print the next one with a separate color. So in this case there's a red frame around each stamp and then the plane is blue. So you have to put the red frame down and then put the plane down. Now sometimes you get this, you mess up. They occasionally would get the, uh, the plane upside down. Usually they caught themselves and threw these away. Not in this case. In this case, a block of a hundred made it out. Um, the most, how much is the most that a given stamp? I'm, okay, they, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spoil a little bit and say, uh, there is a, a two by two block that's been sold before. I'm not counting that. I'm just counting an individual stamp. How much do you think that's worth? I'll say more than a black lotus. You are correct. Nine hundred seventy-seven 
$1,500. As big as philately is, I'm sure that's not how you say it, um, stamp collecting is love of stamps. Uh, it's no wonder that it's the most expensive, that the most expensive stamp is worth more than the most expensive magic card. I mean, there are a lot more stamp collectors out there. It has, it's a much longer historical trend. Uh, well, of course. Okay, now we're getting into the card game section of this. Uh, all the ones passed here are going to actually be cards. So we're going to do a little bit more of an apples to apples to comparison, but as I say, as I'm giving you a card that can't be played in any tournament, or as at least Black Lotus is vintage, right? The Illustrator Pikachu, uh, just in Japan, it's never printed in English, it's awarded to those who had a winning entry in the Pokemon card game illustration contest started in late 1997. Um, only six of these exist in the world, and one is not in circulation. It's not in anyone's hands that can actually leave. I think it's like a museum or something like that. So, only five existing collector's hands is what I mean to say. How much do you think an illustrator Pikachu is worth? More or less? I'm gonna say less than a Black Lotus. How much? If you had to guess. $20,000. $20,000. Good guess! Exactly! $20,000. Now, uh, this is another one where they've been listed for much more than that. I think the highest listing is $150,000. Actually, at the time that I sent this, it was $100,000. Um, but the price that it's listed at is not the price that it's sold for. Um, there you are. Now, here's here's a good one. So you, you play Hearthstone. Same company. You remember how Hearthstone sort of... I think Hearthstone is what kicked the World of Warcraft trading card game out to a large extent. Let's shift our focus over to this very similar feeling game that's online and makes us a lot more money. Uh, but when the, uh, I'm gonna, uh, comments are gonna come flying and say, no, that's not right, or maybe not. Uh, when the WoW TCG was in existence, it came with these loot cards. And if you play WoW, even if you don't play the card game, you probably know what I'm talking about. These were both playable in the game, having their own stats and whatnot, and they had a little scratch section, which had a code. You could go in and type that code and get a special loot-only mount. But the code could only be used once. <laughs> so there is a very limited supply of these babies running around. Uh, if you have one that is that has not been scratched off and is in near-mint condition, the Swift Spectral Tiger is worth the most. Absolutely. Is it worth more than a Black Lotus? I'll say no. I say know no? WoW items are expensive, but... are very right, not even 1000 The most expensive one that I could find that was actually sold was about $700, uh, because they were printed in much greater numbers than the Black Lotus. Um, and since the, the trading card game isn't actually a thing anymore, they aren't playable in there, uh, there's much lower demand. Even though it's still, as I hear, a pretty good mount in the game. Uh, now, I wanted to do a a baseball card, but I wanted to make it interesting. Um, I didn't want to do one that was just, let's pick the most expensive one, or something like that. Uh, but, I wanted to do, I wanted to throw you a curveball. No pun intended, that just happened. Okay, so, I'm giving you an altar. This is the only altar that you will see on this list. Um, and, not only is it an altar, it's in it's cut. So this is the only one that's actually cut on the list. So the T206 Honus Wagner, I'm assuming that's how you say his name, if that's not. The Flying Dutchman was his nickname. Uh, back in the dead ball era, this was one of the best baseball players. Actually, I, okay, I don't know how much the internet is right about this, but what I heard is that he's supposed to still be one of the best players in the game. If we extrapolate it out. A very, very good baseball player. Uh, this was also back in the day when trading cards were uh, sold by cigarette companies. To kids! And depending on the story that you believe, either he 
didn't want his image uh, getting kids to buy cigarettes, that's the more flattering story, or he just wasn't getting enough money for it. In any case, he, did, he said, no, you can't do that, and so they stopped printing Honus Wagner's. So, only a few of these were made, uh, but one in particular. Uh, this one's called the Gretzky. Um, insert the rest of the name here. Uh, this one was found by a collector, and he noticed that it had some miscoloring and some wear. So he cut through that to try to increase the value of it, and it also helped to recenter the card. Um, and it was sold to somebody who's sold it, sold it, sold it, so on and so forth. At some point, it got into the hands of Wayne Gretzky, hence being the Gretzky Wagner. Um, it was later found out that this guy actually did alter it, um, and he went to jail for mail fraud for quite a while, and... Yeah, so it has, it has a bit of a history behind it. Uh, but how much do you think that this one's worth? Did it get helped, or did it get hindered by the fact that it was altered, by the fact that it was cut? And people found out about it, so... I don't know what you mean by cutting. So, like, like Just take the card... Half? No, no, not cut in half, but like... So it helped to... Imagine if you had a card. Um, I wish I had a card right now to help to demonstrate. But imagine if you had a card that was just slightly off. This is way back it, in the day. So it was misprinted. It was misaligned, it. yeah. Okay. And he cut so it that it was. Cut. He it. Yeah, he cut it to recenter it and to get rid of some of the wear that was on it, the miscoloration and whatnot on the edges, especially. They arrested him for mail fraud for that. Well, mail fraud for a bunch of They sold it to near mint. I, I assume. I mean, yeah. that, if you're cutting it to get rid of like all the bent edges and miscoloration, yeah. you probably it sell probably it to get a better condition. Alright, so. right. here we go. Holy shit, yes. Uh, <laughs> this is the only instance that I'm aware of, at least, where an, a known alteration of a card made its value shoot way up. Uh, $2,800,000. You can't do that with a black lotus. Uh, not only because it's further in the future and now we have better grading skills, but you just couldn't... I can't imagine someone doing it with a black lotus. You, you are taking a huge risk, and of course this guy did too. Um, different time, maybe? I don't know. Okay, so the most expensive card in Magic versus the most expensive card in Yu-Gi-Oh! And like Black Lotus, this card is banned. Uh, for very good reason. Uh, very good reason. I'm trying to think of a good comparison. Um, so long story short, you sacrifice, uh, you tribute a monster that you probably don't care about because it's small and weak, and you look at their look at their hand, get rid of all of the ones that are uh, 2,000 or greater attack, I believe is the number. And then you do that the same thing for the top three draws, for the next three draws, and I think it also does that for the field as well. I may be mistaken about that. It's a banned card. I, I don't look at banned cards all that often. Um, this... what would that be? That would be... like, it's a little bit surgical extraction plus... bone splinter? I don't know. I, I'm, I, I don't know. It's... It doesn't have a good comparison, but the, the, the point is, you tribute something that you don't care much about to lock your opponent out of the game, or at least as far as big creeps, big monsters are concerned, for a little while. Um, and for a while, it was just a promo. It was just... You, it was not available in structure decks, or a reprint set, or anything. It was just, if you did well, then you got the promo, et voila. Um, when they released it to the public en masse, they decided, no, this is a card that not everyone should have. This is going to wreck things, so we're going to ban it. It was emergency banned, and the card did not see a lot of play. But, the, how much is the promo one worth? Uh, they, uh, they obviously didn't print very many of them, because these were exclusive to, I think it was like, Shonen Jump tournament winners, or... Anyway. I'm gonna guess less than a Black Lotus. You're gonna guess less. Well, you're right. <laughs> buy more than $20,000. Um, 
I'm actually not sure why that is. Uh, maybe it's because it's a much, much newer card. Maybe it's because it's easier to find near mint copies of them. Maybe it's because it's banned in all formats, and at least Black Lotus has vintage as an outlet for demand. But for whatever reason, oh, and also the art. The art. Yeah. The art for Crush Card Virus is... I mean, it's not even like anime cute. It's just like this virus with a character on it, and it's just swimming around in ether. I think that the answer is there's not a lot of money in Yu-Gi-Oh cards individually compared to Magic cards. That's very true. Even though, so it is true that Yu-Gi-Oh is a game that has more cards in circulation than Magic, but because Yu-Gi-Oh is a game that also has a much more aggressive reprint policy, which is part of why they have more cards than Magic. And now this is in the world, not North America. In North America, it's Magic. But in the world altogether, it's Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, but yeah, that Yu-Gi-Oh tends to have a much more aggressive... You know, they, they do a Modern Masters set every, every year, if you will. Um, yeah, that's probably a, in large part the reason why. Um, although that's, that's for a given card in general. I'm still a little bit surprised for this one. A, just a little bit. Now, let's try to do a little bit of an apples to apples comparison. We have another magic card here for you. This one is the Blue Hurricane. Uh, now, do you know what summer... Oh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you two. <laughs> you may already know, but let's... I think, yeah, you do. I've told... I know at least I've told you about it. You were probably sitting there going, Yeah, I know this, Jay. Come on. Um, so, Summer Magic. It's a revised edition asterisk. In the summer of 1994, Wizards decided that that original revised edition, that came out looking like crap. Uh, look at all these washed out cards that just, uh, they look, they don't look like anything that's worth all that much, right? You look at even the Unlimited one, which is also, which is also a white border, and you greatly prefer that. And then they had some misprint errors. Uh, one of the, what was, which gen was it that had like a different art? Uh, it's on the screen. They, they messed up the, the art for it. Um, well, they decided they were going to go and fix these errors by printing revised again, which I would have very much liked when I was going out and buying duels. <laughs> I would have loved that so much. Uh, and they were printing them in England, and at first it looked okay. I mean, they're, they're darker. They, they don't have that washed out look. Unfortunately, they had the opposite problem. They were too dark, which became especially obvious for the green cards. Uh, they still got that same uh, jin. They still got the wrong art on that one. Um, and there were a few other miscellaneous errors thrown about. Um, fun story before we get to this one. When I was over at the original game store that I used here in Athens, uh, I walked in and looked through the collection of Blue Commons, and came across an unstable mutation, and it was revised. It was summer. It was a, a summer unstable mutation, and somehow it was still in great condition. And I'm just, I'm standing there like, calm down, calm down, don't, don't react, just don't react at all. And got a few more cards to kind of cover it because I was really nervous, and went up to the front and bought all those cards, and came out with a card that cost me. 10 cents and was worth $150. And maybe that makes me a bad person, but just in the moment, I don't know. That's that's just how I reacted. That's... Yeah, that's I didn't... What, that's what the common bin is. Yeah. That's what the common bin is. There you go. No, that's right. Yeah, I mean, you find gold. Every now and then you find gold. Um, I wish that I had known what I was looking for back then so I could pick out the serum missions too, but well, I'll take a summer card. Now, I didn't sell it, but I did trade it for a bunch of stuff. My, uh, the promo Crucibles you see me play, um, that's where those came from. Um, a Knight of the Reliquary, uh, and some promo Enlightened Tutors, some other cards. Uh, that's where those came from. It's from that trade. I trade one common for a bunch of promos. And that person is sitting pretty on a $300 unstable mutation now. I think it's $300. most famous misprint from that is the Blue Hurricane. Now, who cares about Unstable Mutation? It's a common. Blue Hurricanes are rare. They didn't print very many of these, uh, of these summer revised 
most, most of the cars that they did print were destroyed because QA came in and said, these look like crap, what are you doing? Let's, let's get rid of them. Yeah, see, about that, um, we already shipped some of them out. We did what? Yeah, so England and apparently Texas of all places already got some summer cards, and they were distributed from there. Yeah, so, but because of that very limited number that were actually released, they estimate that it's only about 11 uh, Blue Hurricanes that were printed. Now, it's great to have a summer duel, but, you know, it's still a duel. You can go and get a duel from revised, regular revised, unlimited, beta, alpha. Blue Hurricanes only came from this one set. They're worth a, they're worth a pretty penny. Also right. Um, this is another instance of did it sell for more? I, I know I'm going to see comments in here. And if you're if if a black if a blue hurricane has sold for more than a black lotus, let me know, please. And I'm, I'm, by black lotus, I mean the most expensive black lotus sold um, because I know that they've sold for more than a heavily played unlimited black lotus. Uh, Ten thousand dollars. It's the most famous misprint in magic history, but it's still Hurricane. It's still not a very playable card. Okay, actually, I, I say that and then I immediately think, why would you play that card? I mean, why wouldn't you just like frame it or something? But I don't know, that says something about me. I like playing my misprints. As you've seen with the yeah. odds, I got in trouble for doing that. So that's and on still on still limitation you can at least play a legacy in okay. a so crazy aggro deck. The uh oh, what was it in San Diego 2012? This was after Geist of St. Trap was released, the uh Blouses, okay? Blouses yeah. deck. Troll Ascetic and Geist of St. Trap first and an SCG open. That's the <laughs> But that was I, I think it was two one step mutations. It might have been three and two uh, spectral flights instead. But spectral flight, another comment that just randomly showed up in a first place legacy deck. Uh, I've tried I've tried to run a stable mutation in my band Ogles deck, and looking back at it, I wish that I kept it just long enough to show it off in at least one of those videos to say, oh, look what I got. Um, and it actually would have been worth more. definitely win, and your prize is... Um... We should do another drug match. I don't know. Alright, you I'll buy, buy the alcohol. alcohol. I'll buy the alcohol. We should do that. Deal. Yeah. yeah! I still have my model blue cube. Now, the reason we haven't thrown some games down with that is that it needs to be organized very badly. It has cards that are all over the place from it, and I don't know how long it'll take me to get it back together, but at some point before I, you know, before, I'm not going to be living here forever, so we're, you and I are going to have to throw down a game, just get some, uh, have you ever done Solomon drafting? No. What's no. that? Solomon drafting, oh boy, it's, so you take a pool of cards, say like a pack, and you divide that pack into two, so that one player, uh, you'll, let's see. Okay, it's, it's easier to explain using a cube, because you don't have to worry about dividing packs with an odd number of cards. Um, let's say that I take eight cards from the cube, and uh, let's say that I'm going first. Uh, I will take eight cards and look at these cards and say, let's see, how do I want to divide these into two piles that I'll present to you, and you'll pick one pile. I'll go with oh, these yeah. four and these four, and you pick which of those two you want and which I get. And then you'll do the same thing back to me. And then you'll do it, and I'll do it, and I'll do it, and you'll do it, and you'll do it, and I'll do it. And I'll do it. And however many times we repeat this process. Uh, it's really fun with a cube, and I don't know how this is going to go with a mono blue cube. This is going to be crazy. I have done that before. We call yeah. it fact or fiction drafting. Okay, that's it's and the same piles thing. of five. Yeah. Okay, piles of five. Well, this one I I've seen in piles of eight and six, mm -hmm. uh, because usually with a pack it's uh, 
let's see, it's, you take out the land and the token or market card, and there's 14 left, so you take two packs, there's 28, and you go 8866. Eight, six, six. Doing the math in my head too, yeah. So that's 28. So you just put the packs together and do 8, and then the other person does 8, then 6, and then you do 6. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's Let's get some people big. over in uh, Stu Ford Manor. Some... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, enough of that. I don't even know why that showed up in my... I need sleep. All right. Well, thank you for staying tuned to us. Thank you for watching all this crazy, crazy stuff we've been on about. And what was your final? What was your final score actually? I think I missed two or three. Uh, it wasn't many. You got Glistener off. That's the one that really matters. You got ten, ten and 12. twelve. Yeah. Not bad. I'll take it. Not bad at all. Yeah. All right. That's it. YouTube. I will see you later.